Howdy, I'm Mark Talim here, and today I'm going to be discussing a bit of a recent development. So, last Monday, it was announced that Manga Entertainment, one of the leading distributors of anime in the UK and Ireland, is going to be rebranded. It's going to become Funimation. So they're going to lose the logo, they're going to lose the brand, and they're just simply going to become the UK and Ireland branch of Funimation. And this seemed a little bit inevitable, considering that they've been owned by Funimation for a while, and it just makes sense for Funimation to kind of consolidate uh, its branding. But some people have very strong emotions tied to the manga entertainment brand, and understandably some people are quite upset about this. Um, I myself am not nearly as upset, uh, simply because one of the key things in this is that the people working at manga entertainment now are going to be keeping their jobs. They're not going to lose their jobs. Everyone who's working on manga entertainment is going to become part of this new Funimation UK and Ireland, which is good. Um, that's a very important aspect of it. But I thought it might be interesting to take a look back at manga entertainment, see how it kind of began, uh, to talk about my own personal experiences with manga entertainment, and also my thoughts on some of their more recent decisions. So let's start off with the history of the company. How did manga entertainment become Manga Entertainment. Interestingly, Manga Entertainment started out not as a distributor of anime, but actually a distributor of music, films, and documentaries. Uh, it was originally founded in 1987 by Chris Blackwell. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with Chris Blackwell, um, he is best known for establishing Island Records, which is a distributor of music in the UK. And as part of that, he established a subsidiary. Um, interestingly, in my research, I've come across two different names for it. I'm not entirely sure which is the true name. So both of them are Island World Communications or Island Visual Arts. I'm not entirely sure which was the correct name, but those are the two names that I've come across in my research. And at the beginning, as I said before, they only kind of worked on distributing music films, uh, music documentaries, etc, etc. However, around 1991, they interestingly acquired the distribution rights to Akira, and they released it in cinemas, and it did incredibly well. And they suddenly realized, hang on, this anime thing is actually pretty profitable. And so they established themselves as manga video and began releasing a variety of anime films for the UK market. Interestingly, they were known for embracing the more kind of gory, sexual aspects of anime, the kind of more racy elements. And interestingly, they were also known for producing dubs for these films and OVAs that included a lot of swearing, sometimes to intentionally increase the age rating for this piece of media. Eventually, they got big enough uh, that they decided that they would try investing in an actual film. Uh, interestingly, the original Ghost in the Shell film was partially funded by Manga Entertainment themselves. They were on the production committee for that film. And in order to be able to distribute this film internationally, they acquired an American distributor called LA Hero uh, in order to be able to distribute their media in America. And Ghost in the Shell did well enough at the time, um, but it wasn't the breakout hit that they wanted. And because of that, they ended up in a bit of financial trouble. Now, years later on the Manga UK podcast, uh, Jerome Mazandarani said that initial investment they made in Ghost in the Shell uh, was eventually made many, many times over because it gave them uh, access to the Ghost in the Shell franchise, which as you guys know, ended up becoming quite popular. Um, but at the time, it was a bit troubling for them. And so they ended up focusing more heavily on releasing OVAs in order to recoup costs. Now, eventually they were purchased by Anchor Bay, who they themselves were eventually purchased by Stars, as in the cable channel in America. And eventually the American branch of Manga Entertainment uh, kind of ended up becoming dormant. The last major release that they had uh, was for the film Redline. And afterwards, they just ended up kind of focusing on re-releases of films. For instance, The Ghost in the Shell that we mentioned. On the other hand, Manga Entertainment in the UK, which from henceforth I'm going to be referring to as Manga UK, uh, ended up kind of reforming themselves. They began to focus on licensing anime television series uh, from American distributors, such as Funimation, such as Viz Media, such as Bandai Visual, etc, etc. 
and this proved to be quite successful for them. It actually wasn't that long after they began doing this, only a couple years after actually, that I myself came across the brand. Having learned about the medium of anime, uh, I was very interested in checking out many anime films and TV series. And of course, one of the first ones I went to was Studio Ghibli, which was distributed by a company called Studio Canal in the UK. But the other ones I went for were releases from Manga Entertainment. Uh, for instance, of course, I got Ghost in the Shell. But I also started picking up a bunch of their TV series. I remember distinctly amongst the first TV series that I picked up were Devil May Cry, the animated series, and Sengoku Basara because they were based on video games uh, that I myself enjoyed. But of course it wasn't until I started picking up their Naruto series uh, that I really became hooked on it. And if you take a look at my anime collection you will see that I have a lot of manga entertainment series. They were very clearly a very crucial part of my continuing interest in anime. And whenever I went to cons such as MCM Comic Con, Nam Con, etc, etc, I always made it a plan of mine uh, to visit their booth, to talk to the people that were in charge at the time, um, to pick up a couple of their series. As time went on, uh, they became a little better off. Around 2015, they actually bought themselves out from Stars and became an independent company. And they continued to release various anime series. At one point I remember they partnered up with Funimation, although interestingly Funimation ended up going to Anime Limited eventually before coming back and buying Manga Entertainment in 2019. And of course since then Funimation has made it clear, particularly last Monday, uh, that they're going to consolidate their branding, that they're going to get rid of the Manga Entertainment brand and replace it with their own Funimation brand. Now of course I'm going to be very interested to see how this affects things. Of course one of the things that I'm wondering about is considering that they have worked in the past with many other American licensors such as Viz Media, Sentai Filmworks etc etc. I'm curious now are they going to be able to continue to do those deals or is it going to be a case that they're going to have to focus pretty much exclusively on Funimation titles. But that's something that I'm going to have to see for myself in the future. I'm sure it won't take that long to be able to figure that out. But I thought it might be worth discussing one of the most unusual experiences I had with them recently. Admittedly in recent years I've ended up buying predominantly from Anime Limited. A big part of that has to do with the fact that I've become very interested in the Gundam series and Anime Limited are distributing that in the UK and Ireland but also just a variety of other kind of more unusual anime movies and TV series were coming out from Anime Limited. So I ended up buying manga entertainment titles relatively infrequently. I still bought them on occasion, but relatively infrequently. However, something that got me very excited was I believe it was around the beginning of 2020, maybe even the end of 2019, when they announced that they were going to be distributing Cartoon Network series on DVD and Blu-ray. Now I don't know how well known this is, but not only am I a fan of anime, I'm also a big fan of Western animation. Ever since I was a kid I've absolutely adored Disney movies, Don Bluth movies, and of course a lot of Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon series. And there's been some truly amazing series released, for instance from Cartoon Network, in the past few years. But unfortunately it seems here in the UK and Ireland it seems that it's a little difficult to actually be able to get these series on DVD and Blu-ray unless you import them from America or Australia. Monk Entertainment themselves ended up deciding to release some of these series. Some of the stuff that they released was uh, several seasons of Adventure Time on DVD and Blu-ray, um, the complete series of Samurai Jack, um, the mini-series Over the Garden Wall, and Steven Universe. They released the first season of Steven Universe and had plans to release season two of Steven Universe. And I was super excited about this. I bought Over the Garden Wall, I bought the first season of Steven Universe, and I was like, okay, this is going to be great. I'm going to get a couple more seasons of Steven Universe, and then I'm going to start watching it. And interestingly, they announced that Steven Universe season two was being delayed indefinitely. And I wasn't entirely sure, did it mean it was cancelled? It seemed a bit strange to me that they would cancel it, but I kind of decided, you know what, I'll wait a bit. But it seems that they ended up losing the rights to release these series, or maybe they just didn't want to release these series. I have no idea what happened. But as far as I'm aware, they haven't distributed any Cartoon Network series since then. And I was quite disappointed. I was looking forward to collecting Steven Universe. I was hoping that someday they might pick up regular show because I watched the first season of that and I absolutely loved it. And admittedly that made me a little bitter towards Monk Entertainment recently. Um, but 
I still have a lot of respect for the brand and there have been so many important films, so many important TV series that I've picked up from them and I'm always going to treasure them, um, the memories that I have of collecting manga entertainment properties. However, it's not all doom and gloom. I think that this move for Funimation is very smart, very intelligent, and hopefully this is going to cut the costs of releasing these series in the UK and Ireland. And hopefully we'll see a greater variety of anime films, TV series, and hopefully OVAs in the near future. We'll just have to see. So that was my video on manga entertainment, uh, my, like a bit of the history of them, my own thoughts on them, and my thoughts on <laughs> the whole Cartoon Network debacle. Um, let me know your thoughts on manga entertainment, um, kind of your own personal history with them, uh, your thoughts on this rebranding to Funimation. Uh, do you think it's a good thing? Do you think it's a bad thing? Did you know any of this information beforehand? Do you have any other interesting information to share about manga entertainment? Leave that and any other things you want to say in the comments below. So thanks for watching, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe and bye bye.